Hello, this is Space Wombat by eZone.com, and in the 3D Groove game engine, as you can tell from the logos at the top left and right. This is a 3D platformer that came out in 2004, and there's an opening cutscene here, so I'm just going to let that play first before I begin talking. All right, what an introduction. So we have our main character here, the Space Wombat. Uh, and I actually, just to show, I have 100%ed this game, see, 100% complete. Uh, but I'm actually going to start a new game just for this. And we're going to go on hard difficulty. Because I'm good enough at the game for this. I've actually played this game before, so well, I just said that. <laughs> Uh, you might notice as well that I'm actually scaling this up. It normally would play in a 640 by 480 resolution. Oh, we're going to turn off hints. But it's playing in HD, which is alright. Um, now you'll also notice, perhaps, that my health bar is partially cut off the side of the screen because of the mod that I'm using to scale the game up to that resolution. But that's okay. And as you can see, it's a pretty standard uh, 3D platformer collectathon type game. Uh, if you're not familiar with this game, I'm not surprised because it's pretty obscure. It was delivered as a web game in 2004. So this was actually a 3D web game, which is pretty impressive for the time period. Because uh, this is basically Nintendo 64 quality graphics here. All, so all things considered, uh, they actually did a pretty good job on this. This is easily the most ambitious game made in the 3D Groove game engine, which is the game engine that was used to create this. Hence why their logo is on this game. Uh, and this was made in 3D Groove SX, if you're a bit of a nerd and want to know specifically which uh, version this was made in. Yeah, it was made in 3D Groove SX. And I'm scaling it up. The other option was to play it in 640x480 resolution, but have the UI work correctly, so I'm... I'm favoring uh, playing in this high resolution, even though my health bar gets a little bit trimmed off, and you can't really see the timer. Which is not ideal, but it's the best I could do for the time being. And hey, it actually does look alright. Uh, now, you can play these levels again a second time, and if you do that, then you'll unlock a special suit. So why don't we try it? Uh, you, you have to beat the clock this time. So the first time, there's no timer. This time, you have to beat the clock. Now, you might be wondering, with a game of this quality, why would this, as a web game, not really catch on? Because, after all, um, this looks like, you know, it's, it's pretty well done. It has joystick support, or 360 controller support in my case, because that's what I'm actually using. I'm using a 360 controller, but the game says joystick. Um, you know, it has... It's a 3D platformer in the form of a web game, for goodness sakes. But here's the thing, right? This game is actually pretty long, um, which is surprising. It fits into like five megabytes, but it's actually pretty a, a pretty long game. So um, when it comes to web games, your first level has to really pack a punch, and this feels um, it controls really well until you consider that in the browser uh, you couldn't use a controller; you could only use arrow keys. And wow, I ran out of time because um, I'm on hard difficulty.
All right, well, we'll come back to that later. Um, first level ran out of time on hard difficulty. Okay, so in these levels, there's like a uh, laser coming up behind you, and you have to complete them fast enough to not get shocked by it. Which is actually not that hard in any of these levels, because uh, the laser move is pretty slow, but you could see it if I was just standing around, so that's why this is like a kind of a corridor, and the music has changed. But yeah, this game fits into like 5 megabytes, which is actually really impressive when you think about it, because you look how many worlds there are, there are a lot of levels in this game. Yeah, you need to collect every gum nut to unlock the blue one. The, the things that we're collecting are called gum nuts. Um, which I guess is what wombats eat. I mean, I wouldn't know. I'm, I'm in Canada, I know nothing about wombats. But, that's the idea. And this actually controls really well. I'm gonna try that again timed, because there's no real way to do it faster, so... Unlike the first level where it's kind of non-linear, this one the timer is, is going to be more relaxed, because you pretty much have to do it in a certain amount of time. You know, there's there's less options for where to go in the first level, so... The, but yeah, as you saw with the first level, on hard difficulty, the timer is actually pretty tight. But yeah, as I was saying, with web games, your first level really needs to pack a punch. And, uh, or your first few levels, anyway. There are games like, um, On the Rails by Natrome, I believe it's called, which pulled that off. They have a lot of levels, but the first few levels are pretty much the most fun ones in the entire game. This one, a lot of the fun levels are towards the end of the game, which means that in the web version, uh, web games, you know, typically searched by people who are just trying to find something fun to do for five minutes, it just doesn't really work with the format. Uh, the, now the letters only appear the first time, and the gum nuts, they appear every time, so the gum nuts are a requirement to pass the level, but the letters are just like a bonus deal thing. And I don't really remember these uh, levels' specific layouts. Like, I remember these levels vaguely, but not really how to actually run them correctly. I feel like this is the type of game that would actually be kind of fun and difficult to speedrun. There are a couple of glitches that I've found just playing it by myself that are, um, I imagine quite exploitable, but, you know, I'm not a speedrunner. And this is basically, you know, sort of Nintendo 64 quality graphics, so for a game which was made in Shockwave, and yes, this was made in, um, well now it's Adobe Shockwave, but at the time I think it still would have been Macromedia Shockwave, uh, this is actually pretty good. It wasn't made using the native Shockwave 3D asset extra it was made using the 3D Group Engine, so it basically plugged that in. Did I miss one over here? I think I missed one over here. Yeah. I don't know how I missed that. I went around this loop, right? Oh, I pressed the button to raise them. That's the trick to this level. There's a button that you have to press. Yeah. Which button? Which button did I press to raise these? I think there was one over here I pressed. Yeah, you can smash these guys on the head, except you can't do it with the red ones. Was it this guy over here? Did I press a button here? I thought I pressed another button in addition to the one that I pressed before, and that's what brought up the crates. Huh. I must have missed them somehow. I don't know. That's gonna be probably a challenge for when I try and do this level timed. We'll see if I can do it timed. The graphics look decent scaled up. I mean, the textures are obviously kind of blurry, but, you know, OpenGL is doing a decent job of scaling this up. I, mean, I could play it using the software render, but it would not look better. Well, that's a great start to the time level. I should probably be using my time more, more valuable things, but I'm not. Go. 
Oh, there's a button at the back of this loop, isn't there? That's it. Yeah, that makes it a bit challenging, doesn't it? Because, you know, I can't get up here before, can I? So I have to go around a second time. That's a bit of a challenging design. Oh, yeah, uh, so in this game, there isn't a way to just move the camera. It ignores... Wow, I couldn't see that at all from that angle. Uh, it ignores the right stick, but you can press X to go into first person, and then you can aim the camera. It's kind of weird. I'll show it after, because uh, right now I'm trying to beat the timer, which is actually pretty strict. And I probably won't beat this one, to be completely honest. Because it's actually pretty tight. I'm guessing it's whatever the developer's best time was. And they're all doable. I've done all of them, but some of them are actually hard. As would be expected from a hard difficulty. I can appreciate a game where the hard difficulty actually does mean a hard difficulty. We're nearly done here. We're wrapping this up. Oh, what one am I missing? I was missing one somewhere, but I don't know where in the level I missed one. Yeah, okay. Well, I want to keep this brief, so let's move on. Level 4. Here we can actually see the red laser approaching us. So you can you can see that the like the 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 health bar isn't actually getting clipped off because um, the entire game is getting clipped off. No, the game canvas is the correct size because you can see at the beginning that the health bar actually warps over there. So it's because of the change in aspect ratio. Um, the game expects to be a four by three aspect ratio, and I'm sizing it up to. 16 by 9, but I'm actually rendering it natively at this resolution, right? I'm not changing the aspect ratio to 16 by 9 after the fact. Like, this is actually rendering it 16 by 9. Um, and as a result of that, the UI buttons are in the wrong place. But that's okay, because the UI is not too useful. So this is another level where, again, I, I brought this up at a really bad time. I can't really show the first person view because I'm focusing on staying ahead of this laser. Uh, but yeah, this is a, this game controls really well. It's easily one of the most ambitious games made in the 3D Groove engine, I would say. Um, it has a ton of levels. It, it also fits into under 5 megabytes, which is... Um, pretty, pretty compressed for a game of this size, but it had to, right, because it was a web game. Uh, now, given the web game version of this actually was just a trial for this, which was the downloadable version, which is what I'm playing. The web game version is pretty difficult to get running, because even if you have Shockwave, um, installed, which nobody has Shockwave installed anymore, but even if you do, uh, if you say you're using Pale Moon or something that is actually capable of, of running Shockwave, um, the 3D Groove Extra only works with Shockwave um, 8.5 and under. Possibly Shockwave 9, I haven't tested with it. It definitely does not work with Shockwave 10 and over. The Extra was not updated past that point, so uh, if you're on the latest version of Shockwave, you can't run it. If you're on an older version, um, I'm gonna try this again for the timer now. If you're on the older version, it'll work, but then it's not compatible with newer browsers, so you have to have something like Netscape installed. You can't have that installed on newer Windows, you have to use a VM, and it just compiles. Basically, it's just easier to play this downloadable version, which uses a, a Shockwave projector, so, or a director projector, more, more appropriately. Um, so that none of that is an issue, and it just comes with the correct setup out of the box. Which is the nice thing about director projectors. I'm running this on Windows 10, and it's still working, and I'm not using any sort of patch or anything like that, aside from my mod to make it full screen. This is running out of the box. I'm not using, like, PG Voodoo or something. And yes, I did 
create the mod to run this game in full screen. Um, but really, um, I, I mean, I wish I could say it applied to every 3D group game, but it doesn't. It only works with this particular one because it's meant to run at multiple resolutions. It's just that 640 by 480 was the maximum, and that's not optimal. <laughs> And each of the resolutions that it was targeted to run at, not 16 by 9, so we get this problem. That the UI is off, because it was not meant for a screen of this type. I suppose that I could change my mod to uh, upscale the res- or not upscale, but like, scale the resolution to, um, to a- the nearest, like the best, um, 4x3 size and then just put black bars on the side. I could do that. Wow, I I didn't do that on time? Wow, the timer is more strict than I remember in this game. Oh well, we'll go on to level 5. And we'll forfeit the super suit for now, because, yeah. Yeah, the timer is actually a challenge, and as I said, I can really appreciate a game that says it's hard and is hard. E-Zone is really good at that. Um, one thing I can say for certain is that E-Zone definitely tests their games a lot, because it, they must, because um, the, the hard mode is bang on, like it's exactly the difficulty it needs to be that you won't probably get it the first try, but it is absolutely doable if you practice. Did I see something glowing over here? Oh yeah. Um, now I can show off. Yeah, pressing X goes into first person like that, and oops, I died because I was standing on a lava plate. So yeah, it's... Let me get that guy again. It's, um... Press X to enter first person, and then you can control the camera like this and sort of pan the camera around, which is not ideal, but you can use it to get out of sticky situations. Um, it'd be nice if it just supported the right stick, but I think the reason it doesn't is because, as it says at the beginning of the game, this is meant more for joysticks than it is for the actual 360 controller. Oh yeah, you also you don't need to collect letters on your consecutive playthroughs, even if you don't finish the level the first time. So basically, they immediately save as soon as you get them. They're just extra bonus collectibles, basically. And they have no impact on um, how fast you run the levels any time after you actually initially collect them. That's a good time to... Oops. Get out of the way, robot. That's a good time to turn around, see, because you can see what's over there then. It's not ideal to interrupt gameplay to turn the camera, but it, it works, and, you know, at least the feature is included. The first time I played this game, I actually didn't know that that feature was there for the entire game, and I just had to put up with the camera that follows you around, which, to be fair, to be entirely fair, is actually a decent camera. Like, it's doing a good job of following my character and not doing something stupid like going behind walls or whatever. You can, you can tell um, that there's some sort of uh, special code going on here to make it, because it's a circular level, um, follow me in a sort of circle. You can sort of see that it's about a different point, right? I press the button, I don't remember what it does. I see a letter though. And another gum nut I missed, or or it brought back that gum nut when I pressed the button. Yeah, I did, because otherwise this would happen. Alright, let's collect the blue, blue gum nut to finish the level. Just hopping along. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't look amazing, but it looks decent scaled up. I mean, it could look worse. <laughs> it's mainly just the textures that are blurry. Uh, especially the purple ground textures are kind of blurry, but that's because, well, they were blurry to begin with. 
kind of intended to be that way. Alright, we have the boss. Oh, I didn't even get all the letters for that one. I missed the letter T. Got all the letters for all the other ones. So you can see here, this is how your progress is summarized. You can see it on the gates. Right. Uh... That do, I don't remember. So these levels still have the letters. You can pretty much choose when you want to engage with the boss. Oh, that's probably what the button did something to do with that. Probably caused the moving platform to move here. I have to get up there. Uh, okay, here's another one. Uh, so those little lava plates, or not lava plates, like heat plates. There's lava in the game too, that's why I'm confusing them. Um, is they are uh, damage you a little bit, but sometimes it's necessary to step on them, and if you go over them quickly, they won't damage you very much. This guy will chase you around for a bit and get tired, so you can pretty much just engage with him whenever you want. And... Do small hops to kind of engage with him more, and he changes color as he gets weaker. Can't tell where he is. He chases after you. You know, I guess it's a robot, so it doesn't really. It's not necessarily a he or a she. And if you ever get too far away from them, they just return, as you just saw, to their main position. I remember finding a very fast way to do this. I think it was like. There was some point on their feet, or on their belly, where they, like, if you could just mash A, it would just, uh, get stuck to beat them way quicker. Oh yeah, this is it, you can walk on and off their foot like this, and just keep taking damage. And there's the blue gum nut. See, that's like a little, that's like something a speedrunner would do if they had to play this game. Alright, I unlocked the next level. I didn't get the bonus, though. You have to find all the Wombat letters. Okay, I'm only missing one letter, so why don't I go in here again and find just the letter T. Wherever that is. I must have missed it. I don't know where I missed it. Uh, the letter T is apparently here somewhere. I don't know where it is exactly. Don't remember. I mean, how could I be expected to remember? You know? Letter W is in this sort of construction building. I suppose, naturally, you would assume that it is somewhere near the end of the level, or wherever you naturally end up at the end of the level, because it's, um, the letter T, which is the last letter in Wombat. So one would expect... ...that it would be wherever you're last searching to the developer's... at least the developer's prediction of where you would last be searching. So I did come this way, because you need to in order to complete the level. This, uh, yeah, you, you tap A to jump, and uh, you can tap it for a shorter time to get a shorter jump. Pretty standard platformer stuff. I feel like it has something to do with this button. Okay. I hit that button. Last time it didn't do anything. I thought it brought that thing up, but apparently not. Because oh wait, oh this is timed now, so I have I have to rush for it. I forgot. The first time it's not timed, but the second time you'll 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 be done for if uh, if you don't do it fast enough. And I very nearly did do it fast enough because I unlocked the gum that I just wasn't thinking. Oh, 
So not only do I have to find the letter, I have to do it quick enough. with this, but if I can't find the letter T, then I guess that's just my loss. And the timer on this one seems at least a little bit more lenient. I want to say, because I very nearly completed it, even though I didn't know I was on a timer. Jumping, as far as I can discern is not any faster than walking, even though it kind of feels like it is. I have to go back here, right? There's no way that I can cut that corner. Because of the blue gum that's over here. I still didn't see the letter, though. But I can at least get the clock icon. So that, that's nice. I don't know where the letter is. Yeah, I don't know where the letter T is in this level. That's unfortunate, because the bonus levels are fun. But oh well. So yeah, just to show this off, because I think I'm going to leave it here now that I'm done. World 1, well, done as in I can move on to level 2. Here's level 2, which for all intents and purposes are actually worlds, not levels, because they have their own, like... They're called stages, I guess, but these, to me, should be levels, and that should be worlds, but whatever. Level 3. I guess I called it that because physically, in terms of where they are in this space, they are levels. Level 4, and they're all the same length. This level 5... It's a long game. Like, it's a proper game. Level 6. And it, it actually gets challenging. And this brings us back up to the surface, which we saw in the cutscene, which is a fun little touch. These guys can't die because they're red. It's like a little detail. If they're gray, they can be killed, otherwise they can't. And our our goal is to find enough gunnuts to repair our vehicle. Because the vehicle uses gunnuts for, for gas, naturally. For fuel. So yeah, they are all of this length. And they all... Basically, the idea is that if you get all of the clocks, if you if you do every level twice and do it under time, you get a special suit which allows you to do something, gives you gives you like a power up in every level that you wear it in, which is kind of reminiscent of uh, E Zone's newer games, or reminiscent. I guess if it's newer, it's not reminiscent. Uh, it it kind of reminds me of E Zone's newer game, Diversion, where you have the suits. The, how you unlock the suits in that game is a bit different, but it's a similar idea where suits give you, um, not power-ups, but in that game it, it gives you extra coins depending on which one you wear. In fact, this game bears a few similarities to E-Zone's, um, newer games, I guess you could say. You can, you can compare and contrast them. So anyway, uh, I'm gonna leave this here, because I think that completing level 1 is the appropriate objective, objective for, um, the first episode in a Let's Play video. So uh, thanks for watching, and uh, maybe I'll make another part to this. I'll see you in the next video.